The Oscars were a couple of weeks ago. Nobody cares about them. So I'm going to give you an Oscars you might actually care about. This is the Oscars for G.I. Joe fan films. I'm going to put links in the description for you to go see these fan films yourself. We are here to celebrate these things because I guarantee you, as rough around the edges as a lot of these fan films are, and of course they are, they can't compete with the Hollywood budget, it is. Every single one of these motherfuckers is better than the Rise of Cobra. And why are they better? Because they're done from a, a, a place of love, not trying to make money. Um, all of these fan films acknowledge they can't make money. We're going to go through some fan films, and I'm going to tell you some of my favorites. We're going to give out awards. And it's all going to be in good fun and love. Because I got to tell you, if you are the type of person who made a fan film for G.I. Joe, much love to you. I can't, uh, I'm not going to, I can't, can't have anything bad to say about a person who would do that. Now let's get to it. Let's talk about some films. First on the docket, we have Operation Red Retrieval. This is sort of like the, the, the G.I. Joe, if you like just like blood and guts and nastiness, if you're into that kind of more realistic, this is this starts out that. Um, but we see Beachhead, and he's, his whole fingers are blown off, and it's a gnarly shot with some pretty good effects here. And this is directed by Mark Chang, uh, and this is a well-made movie. It's It has some real energy to it. Uh, there's, uh, it's, it looks good. It, it's, it's, but it's that dark, gritty reboot style, like Zack Snyder. -y. Like if Zack Snyder did a great re reboot of GI Joe, that kind of feel. It has like a, it has a, a Reservoir Dog style to it, where we sure dropped right off in the middle, and the rest of the team is just trying to rescue Scarlet. That, that also seems to be a theme that Scarlet is always getting kidnapped, but. You know, uh, she she gets free at some point in most of these movies too, and she does kick a lot of ass in some of these movies. So we won't count that against her. Midway through, it it throws a giant curveball and it throws in another character from another world, another universe. I'm not going to give it away, and it becomes not just a GI Joe fan film, but another fan film from a uh, property that is kind of related to GI Joe. I think I don't know. What do you think? And um, then it becomes a, a totally other weird kind of movie. But it's got that, it's super dark, super bloody. Um, got a body count here. And I'm going to give this the Oscar for Best Gritty Reboot. Okay, because that's what this is. This is a Zack Snyder style gritty reboot. So you've got the desaturated colors of a Zack Snyder movie. and yeah. So check out Operation Red Retrieval. Um, this, was, this is one of the better ones. I definitely recommend checking it out. Can I give you a hand? Don't even lift a finger. By the way, yeah, um, I talk about film on my other YouTube channel, Catharsis Machine, and I am a, a film teacher, occasionally a filmmaker. I produced a movie called The Killers Next Door with my friend Michael Cicero. You can check that out on uh, Tubi, uh, YouTube, anywhere. You pretty much you can find it. I'll put the description there. But anyway, so I want to talk about some film because, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> kind of. Not really. The next in line is called The Fall of Cobra. And this is a very cool little movie. The Cobra is, is basically almost conquered and there's just a few operatives left. The Destro, the Baroness, and Cobra Commander. And they are on the run and a small team goes to take them down. Now this is a funny little movie. And it is shot and directed by Andre Joseph. This has a little bit of the sensibilities of the cartoon where it feels like it's like half comic half serious and uh it's, it's got some funny little moments um for, for instance they're they're they they sort of lampshade the fact that they cast a guy to play duke who looks absolutely nothing like duke right so uh so first the first thing you're gonna notice when you see this movie is like all right why is that duke that looks nothing like duke and uh then later on in the movie, it keeps getting brought up that he's got, like, what's with his hair? What's with Scarlet keeps saying? What's with his hair? What's with Duke's hair? What's with Duke's hair? What did Duke do to his hair? 
And um, and in the end, you reveal that you know there's a reason why Duke's hair is uh, as it is, and he doesn't look like Duke. I have to ask, what is with the hair? <laughs> Like it. That is like that he's going to retire, and so he's he's growing his hair out so he can just be a normal citizen. But what I think is funny about that is because like you're clearly going, oh my god, this guy looks literally nothing like Duke. Um, interesting choice. The other characters look like characters, you know, Scarlet looks like a Scarlet, and and uh, Stalker looks actually exactly like Stalker. That's that's. Uh, I'm going to give it an award here. That's the first award I'm going to give this one, which is best actor portrayal of Stalker. Okay, that's. That goes to you. Finally, just says, you know, hey, uh, uh, there's a reason why my I look nothing like Duke. Okay. And uh, that's called lampshading, by the way, when you're trying to, you know, acknowledge that something is off and you just like, you know, so the audience does a revolt. You just throw a lampshade on it. And uh, so uh, best lampshade goes to The Fall of Cobra. It's a fun little movie. Check it out in links in the description. Next in line, we're going to go for the Battle for the Serpent Stone. And this is a nice little Indiana Jones-style action adventure. And what I love about uh, G.I. Joe's, you're going to have different takes. You can have your gritty, sort of nasty, uh, R-rated version of G.I. Joe, um, like uh, in the IDW Cobra series or uh, Red Retrieval. You can also have a cartoony, sort of sci-fi laden story, like in the cartoon, or you can have a much more realistic adventure story, like in the comic book. And this one goes for a tone and is very inspired by Indiana Jones. You can even see they they uh, they use the Wilhelm scream. It also has just a sort of feel that are going for this serpent stone, which, you know is uh, artifact similar to the Ark that we could use, that Cobra can use to destroy the, the armies of uh, America, right? Best uh, fan film combining Indiana Jones style action with G.I. Joe uh, goes to Battle of the Serpent Stone. This is, this is directed by Sean Robert Olson. Had some pretty convincing actors in it, I will say, uh, especially the women playing Lady J and uh, the Baroness. Um, excellent casting choice, both uh, very attractive women, both you know looked apart pretty well, and uh, do a good job. Some decent fight scenes and just a fun Indiana Jones vibe all the way through. Next, we're going to go to GI Joe Initiate uh, by Bulletproof Owl Productions, and this is like I'm going to give this the award for most metal because there's a metal soundtrack in here that uh, I think the director and producers made. Again, this is the grittier, nastier style G.I. Joe movie. It's made up of a couple of shorts that uh, pick up and then uh, they, they kind of don't quite have an ending. So it looks like it was like the beginning of something. You're supposed to sort of imagine the later. We're also gonna get best use of non-major casts as we have Mercer picked out in here and I've always been a big Mercer fan so it's cool to see Mercer in a fan film he doesn't really show up in any of the others um Rakondo's in there but you know he doesn't quite look like Rakondo but uh very cool um that they picked from some of the not main cast you know we see a lot of you know, see a lot of roadblocks you can see a ton of snake eyes you can see Scarlet's and Baroness all live long day, but you're never going to see uh, Mercer except in this movie. Next, we have G.I. Joe Deception, and this is a massive undertaking. This is a, you know, 10, uh, 14 episode series, web series produced, looks like quite a while ago, um, with the most amount of characters that we see in any of these movies. I mean, there's everybody's in this thing. Sergeant Slaughter, Hawk, Cover Girls, basically, uh, you know, every every character you can think of is going to show up in this thing at some point for a minute. Um, the Dreadnoughts show up. So We're not trash, old man. We are Dreadnought royalty. So we get to see what's really fun is you get to see a lot of different people in costumes. Now, this one doesn't have like the highest budget. Clearly, you know, this is like looks like some 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 friends put it on. Did a pretty good job. Of uh, again, people together. Uh, this is from a YouTube channel called Bros Before Shows, made about 11 years ago. So, uh, but 
it does tell a giant story, um, starting off with Hawk is kidnapped and being tortured, and it's a rescue mission to go and get him. Lots of drama, uh, and I'm going to give this a couple of awards. Absolutely best actress portrayal of a Baroness. Um, absolute perfect Baroness casting. She even tries an accent. Which About you and your pathetic G.I. Joe team. You do not impress me, dog. Okay, okay, she she tries. It's not that's better than uh, Sienna Miller did in Rise of Cobra. Which will blow my mind about Rise of Cobra. I'm going to go on a rant here. Is that you get Sienna Miller who's British, but she's the only British woman in the world who doesn't have a British accent. She has an American accent for some godforsaken reason. Now you have to admit, you had that coming. You put her in a role where she's supposed to be fucking European, and she what is she? She can't even try a goddamn accent. No, this lady tried. She tried an accent. And I also think. Okay, I'm going to say best looking like closest to what the Baroness looks like in any movie. Like, I don't even mean any fan film. I mean any movie. That woman is the Baroness. And, and she's fine. Like, let's face facts. She's fine. Now, the production values here, obviously, they were fighting with a lower budget. Things aren't going to look exactly like they sh should, uh, like the action figures. And that's okay. We expect that. Uh, for instance, they couldn't find twins, so they got these guys who are clearly not twins. But what are you going to do? Uh, overall, there's a lot of heart putting in this thing, a lot of drama. It's pretty fun to watch and see all these people playing so many of the characters. And it's impressive that they got this many people just to show up and like hang out and you know, uh, and be part of a G.I. Joe fan film. It's crazy. By the way, this is this is a sort of a new directive for me. I'm gonna be do I'm gonna review in everything. And I'm not talking about I'm gonna review the crappy movies made by Hollywood, but I'm gonna review everything I can get my hands on. That's G.I. Joe. And uh, and this is the beginning of that. And if you wouldn't mind, you know, if you would like and subscribe and maybe hit that little bell notification like Tunnel Rat hitting the bell after he went through Sergeant Slaughter's training. <laughs> Okay, the next one is G.I. Joe Cobra Strikes. This is, again, a web series. This is done 20 years ago and resurrected and edited and, and put into film festivals recently, so you can actually check it out on YouTube. Um, a, a recent upload, but clearly from 20 years ago. So, you know, the video quality is of, of 20 years ago. But what's great about this is this is a comedy. This is straight-up uh, comedy. And... There's lots of lots of good jokes. Or you know, one thing you'll notice right away is that shipwreck is appropriately played as a pervert, who's always coming on to all the ladies, which is pretty standard, exactly like what he was in the cartoon, which is kind of fun. And they do a lot of fun little tricks, like for instance, when the his tank shows up, it's literally a toy his tank in a green screen, uh, with but with a person convincingly placed in top of it. It just makes it for a fun watch. Um, it's, it's pretty long. It's pretty extensive. I think, you know, they also have my favorite, favorite portrayal of, of Destro, which is he's just literally has a tinfoil face. So why are you wearing foil on your head? It's not a foil mask. You ready to take on the big boys? So, and uh, again, they, they talk about it. His face is literally just tin foiled over his, his, his head. And, uh, so Good fun, uh, clearly knows what it is and makes fun of itself and is just having a good time. Uh, check it out. Okay, the next one is a special one here. This is G.I. Joe Africa version. Okay, that, that's the name of it. Okay, it's the name of the, the movie. And this is from Elegam TV. You again, when I heard the news, I definitely know. You are the most behind the mask. Now, hand that over. And uh, this is really fun. We're going to give this one best foreign film. This is made in Africa. And it mostly consists of just a battle. But it's clearly on the, you know, the streets uh, of Africa. I'm not, I know, I'm not sure quite where in Africa, but uh, Elegam TV. So Elegam TV, African filmmakers. The opening scroll basically says G.I. Joe Africa version. The, the name Storm Shadow is Snake Eye's brother. Though the exact nature of their relationship is not clear, except the fact that they are referred to as brothers. But in this Africa version, one represent evil, white, while the other represent good, black. 
there's always a bad blood between them. So that blood feud is represented in this new story. The The movie is mostly just a battle between uh, Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes, but it gets pretty fun and it gets pretty wacky. Uh, Snake Eyes speaks, so there's none of that, you know, um, his mask, you can sort of see his face. And uh, but then they have like Dragon Ball Z powers. So at one point he shoots like laser beams out of his fist. Another point there, you know, uh, shooting you know balls of uh, energy, and it just has like just a kick-ass, just a fun uh, tribute uh, from some uh, filmmakers that love GI Joe all the way over in Africa. So very cool. Next we have a Snake Eyes fan film, and this is from the Darkest Machines. Directed by Rene Perez. And uh, this is actually, this one's going to win Best Cinematography. But this is the best looking G.I. Joe movie. This is just a really nicely shot. Also has some pretty good and convincing fight choreography. And absolutely the best version of Snake Eyes. So they're going to be winning uh, Best Portrayal of Snake Eyes in a G.I. Joe fan film. Goes to Snake Eyes movie. It's just a convincing costume. And the fight scenes really are convincing as well. And they're pretty brutal actually. This one gets also uh, effects gore uh, award. For having the goriest nasty effects. I mean Snake Eyes shoots a guy in the dick at one point. <laughs> like, right? So if you want to see Snake Eyes shoot somebody in the dick, watch this movie, okay? Uh, you know, when people get a headshot, their face kind of explodes. They've got some nice squib effects. And basically it surrounds uh, the, the story is mostly Snake Eyes is going through the woods trying to plant some money uh, in the woods for his girlfriend who I don't doesn't seem to be Scarlet. Uh, unless Scarlet's changed her hair, which is highly possible that she might because Scarlet is a master of disguise kind of thing. And she could, but it doesn't say she's Scarlet. It's just this like really, really attractive woman with dark hair. Uh, looks more Baroness than Scarlet, but and super hot. Uh, there's actually a moment in which uh, there's apparently nudity, but it is covered with black bars because it's on YouTube. Um, so kudos for putting nudity in a G.I. Joe fan film. Uh, awesome. And, uh, and, and basically it, it goes through Snake Eyes trying to hide this money as he's being hunted down by some assassins and killing them in pretty brutal ways. What's sort of nice is every once in a while he comes up against a woman who doesn't kill him. He just does some like little nerves, Marashi Kage nerve pinchy thing, and then he fall down. He doesn't want to kill a lady. And uh, he finally makes it to the end. And what you find out is that he's not just planting money, he's planting something else. It's kind of a romantic, and it's a kind of a romantic movie, right? Um, but it's beautifully shot, and the Snake Eyes is dead on, and uh, the girl yeah, has got nudity. So, you know, let's give it an Oscar for nudity. They should have Oscars for nudity. Best nudity, even though the black bars is all you see. I'm going to give it best nudity and as only nudity in a G.I. Joe fan film as far as I know. Unless you count uh, this as a fan film. I don't think that it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so next we're going to see if we got to have a Snake Eyes fan film, why not have a Storm Shadow? The Storm Shadow fan film is made by Optical Rhythm, which is a company that has a pretty decent YouTube subscriber base and seems to make... Mostly action scenes. This production company is is from China, and so everybody in the cast is Chinese. So uh, we see Storm Shadow, Snake Eyes, and also Scarlet pops up, and is notable for it. Actually, does have uh, a moment in which uh, we see the backstory where Snake Eyes loses his face. It's sort of sort of a poem told through Storm Shadows. Uh, eyes as he fights uh, um, a series of people and and sort of ruminates about his relationship with his brother Snake Eyes. Pretty well done and very different for a fan film. Check it out. Worth seeing. Next we have Operation Snake Storm Part 1 and 2. I'm assuming it's Part 1 and 2 because I think back in the day you could only upload a certain amount to YouTube. And uh, and so this is this is a lot of these are old. So this is a 14 year old movie uh, made by the Action Workshop, and it looks like this is like maybe some stunt performers got together and made a movie that's basically consists of a series of action scenes surrounding the conflict between Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. 
And it does have a pretty cool action sequence between Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. I'm going to give it best uh, uh, excessive editing because there's a lots of like, there's lots of flinging of shuriken, like landing and crazy Eisenstein like editing uh, all over the place. And then we have, uh, you know, uh, a pretty good portrayal of Destro at the end. They did the one thing that most of these films did as their Destro is they got a guy and they just painted his face, which is kind of fun, uh, like the cartoon. But Destro should have a mask, and so they've got a proper Destro mask. You will bring me the head of your personal adversary, or you will forfeit your own life. Ain't the best looking Destro mask you ever saw, but they made him a badass, and I appreciate that. So that's Operation Snake Storm, part one and two. Now we have the Crimson Archer. And Crimson Archer is a real amazing feat of filmmaking. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the most ambitious of all of these in that it is in a full-on feature-length movie. Now, if you want to see Crimson Archer, it's not quite in theaters yet. Uh, and it's not uploaded to YouTube because it's going through the film festival circuit. So if you want to see that, you're going to have to keep an eye on Trendsetter Productions. I think I'll put some links in the description where you can sign up for their newsletter and get uh, or their Facebook page and follow them so that you can get updates. But it may be coming to a film festival near you. You can go and see this thing in the theater. And if you can, I highly recommend it. It's awesome. It's a full-on feature-length movie. It's got a huge cast. It's also pretty impressive production-wise in that they have uh, helicopters. They've got uh, many, many different characters. They've created a whole fortress set like, out of a sort of warehouse place. They have many of the characters that you love and uh, some really good work on the costumes and visual effects. Now, this is the, probably the most incredible of all of them in just the sheer scope of it and uh you know there's there's things that are long or or longer than this like the couple of web series are longer uh, but what i think is impressive is that he pulled off a whole long feature film and kept the quality up so you know it is it is really well shot with a lot of good special effects, well acted. But the most important thing I think here is the writing is good. So I'm gonna give this best screenplay to the Crimson Archer because it's really full of a lot of good dialogue between the G.I. Joe team. One of, one of the things that I love about it is that you get a lot of, um, a lot of the characters talking to each other like they would, you know, busting each other's balls, playing around. So there's a lot of dialogue, a lot of the play. You get a sense of their friendship. It's getting harder and harder going to these going away parties. Yeah, it's a big barrel of suck. Oh, which is something that Larry Hama talked about was always important is, is the, how, uh, how these guys connect and, and guys and women connect and how um, they form a team and they love each other and they care about each other. And so you've got some great, uh, you've got some really good writing here. Much better writing than any of the three crappy ass G.I. Joe movies that Hollywood made. Uh, and it, also, you know, it's got heart too. Kim Crimson Archer of the title is Scarlet. Once again, captured, although she does become kind of a badass in the end. She does get to kick some butt. Uh, and the G.I. Joe team has to go in and rescue her and also sort of prove themselves. Uh, to get their, you know, status in the in the government um, respected, uh, so there's a little bit of intrigue there with uh, General uh, General Hawk and a sort of or in a, and a higher up general. I can slow down the transfers and I can partially fund the Joes through the discretionary fund, but that's the best I can do until you get me some hard evidence that Cobra's still a threat. Overall, uh, one of the one of the best films, and we'll just give that. Uh, best fan film for i think you got to respect the immense amount of work the um immense amount of effort that went into making this thing and the resources that the directors were able to pull together it's really impressive go check it out it's crimson archer Yo, Joe! Wait for me. that's the other thing about all these movies is they're um 
they may not have the production value. They may not be able to compete with Hollywood, but they actually care about G.I. Joe. They care about the story, and they made something out of love, not out of the, the, the desire to make money. They understand the fans. They understand the uh, the story and, and kept true to it. All these are better than Rise of Cobra. You want to check any of them out please do if you think i missed but uh let me know if you, there's any of that i missed let me know if you watch them what you think uh and um yeah please reach out to the filmmakers tell them you enjoy their work watch it and uh, celebrate uh fan films and make maybe make one i don't know I, maybe i'll make one someday i, I have maybe i'm impressed these, these people did this because it seems like a lot of work